Now then, good morning everybody. Uh, fortunately, for me anyway, the title of this video isn't clickbait, it's a real deal. Uh, as you know, my brother came over recently and obviously chatting with him. He, because of a workplace policy, uh, they had to have a health check. Uh, I think it was a little while ago. Year or two. Anyway, he found out that he had elevated blood glucose. Right. Bearing in mind, my dad had it, my mother's got it. So it was always on the cards, leading the lifestyle I've been leading anyway. It was uh, just a matter of time, I suppose, before I de developed a type. To diabetes. How do I know that? I haven't had it confirmed by a doctor. Uh, I try and stay away from doctors. I'll self-medicate wherever possible. But why, how and why do I know? I'm more or less type 2 diabetic. Well, recently I purchased blood pressure monitor my blood pressure is normal it's pretty good not bad at all so I thought well, and I'm not so bad but when I was with my brother down in Buriram he's got a blood glucose test kit he tested me while I was down there and I was I was high so when I got home I ordered Test kit from Lazada. Chinese, cheaper than he, he paid quite a lot of money for his, his AccuCheck. But um, I went for a Chinese one anyway. It's basically this machine here. You've got your little pen which you put the needles in. And you've got the meter here where you insert the test strips. Anyway, it came on Saturday, so I think Friday was the last time I've drunk any alcohol, eaten any obvious carbohydrates in the form of rice, bread, crisps, potato chips, that kind of thing, noodles. So anyway, when this machine came, I tested myself. I'm out in the sun at the minute and I'm going to be quick because I've got some ingredients out here that I don't really want to sit in the sun for too long, which I'll get to in a bit. Um, so the first time I tested, I was 15.5. Bear in mind, you are diabetic. Once you go above the sort of 7 mark, um, borderline pre-diabetic I think is uh, 6.4 so 15.5 you know what bugger that's a bit high you know obviously anything could have caused that spike what well, I thought I just tested myself as soon as I'd, I got the machine so I thought maybe it's something I've eaten already that might have spiked it caused the spike like that Anyway, the next time I tested, I think it was in the morning, when I just got out of bed, I was 17.8. Now that flicks a switch in my brain. Shit. We've got to do something about this. Obviously, the sensible thing to do, for most people, what most people would do is go straight to the doctors. But uh, not me. Got my head into YouTube, into the internet. Where I found things I'd never heard about before because I've never looked and it sort of never popped up in uh, any conversations I've ever had with anybody, which I'll come to right now. So my brother recommended a, a YouTube channel called Kendi Berry MD. Now he's, he's a doctor. He's got loads and loads of advice about reversing type 2 diabetes, which obviously 
that made my ears prick up. That's the kind of thing, the direction I want to go. And he puts it down, basically, it's not a chronic disease, which most doctors, mainstream doctors will tell you it is. It's purely a dietary disease that can be reversed if you catch it early enough. Now, I haven't spoke to Mike, Mike, Michael George Parker yet about it. Obviously, he's been living with it for a number of years. Um, and uh, when I visited his house a couple of years ago, uh, he tested me when I was up there and my blood sugar was normal. So the way I look at it, the maximum amount of time I've been living with high blood glu glucose is two years, I would guess. But anyway, I've, I've not really had any symptoms. Um, a little bit of blurred vision, which I put down to just being old, and it always seemed worse if I didn't have a good night's sleep. So it didn't really concern me. And then I had a couple of bouts of pins and needles, twice in my left hand, once in my right hand. You know, sometimes you, you sleep awkward on your arm or your arms under your body, and you get the pins and needles. But these pins and needles, they weren't going away till round about lunchtime, which I thought was odd, but still didn't think too much about it. So, like I say, I ordered the blood glucose tester, um, and it's basically giving me a kick in, in the knackers. <laughs> so do something about it. There's no point moping getting depressed. To me, I see it as a challenge, a challenge that I've got to meet head on. And I'm determined to beat and crush this thing. So like I say, I've been researching uh, Ken D. Berry, MD, YouTube channel, there's other doctors on there, Dan Meeks, um, Jason Fung, and others. Right, let me... Uh, Tell you what I've done really since I found out the bad news. Is it bad news? Well, of course it is. It's not good, is it? So what I've done, my last alcoholic drink was Friday. And uh, when you, if you ever look at these these doctors' channels, the main thing, what they say, the reason for type two di type two diabetes is uh, insulin intolerance. So, your body basically lives off two fuels, and there are a couple of us, but mainly glucose, sugar, dextrose, sucrose, lactose, name it what you will, but it's basically sugar. And the other one is, of course, body fat. But your body prefers to feed, because it's easier, I suppose, for the body to feed off uh, sugar. Any excess sugar in your in your system that uh, your body doesn't burn virtually straight away stores as fat. So if you've got excess amounts of glucose which gets stored as fat, your body's never going to burn fat unless you cut down the glucose, the sugar. So since Saturday been researching about a ketogenic diet and basically that's the way I'm hitting this disease because that's what it is dietary disease bad diet over many years and, uh, can't just blame it on beer and other things you know a lot of food that you think is healthy isn't brown bread even brown rice any kind of carbohydrate, really. Your body doesn't need it at all. The only food stuffs your body needs is fats and proteins. Everything your body needs is in there, and minerals, which I'll come on to in a bit from the products I've, I've been buying. Anyway, cut a long story start, short. I've uh, embarked on a ketogenic diet. 
And I've already hit ketosis, which is basically, I'm burning body fat now. And uh, I've got very, very, very little glucose in my system. And the glucose I have got is probably being made by my liver. But uh, like I say, I am in a state of ketosis. I know I am because I'm, I've just been suffering ketogenic flu or keto flu. Headaches, nausea, uh, lethargy. I was out on a run yesterday morning. Um, I felt really good. Just, since I started this diet, I've, I've dropped down. I, I let myself go a little bit because I have been ill with flu. And when my brother coming over, obviously you've seen me fishing chips and big breakfast at Mel's place, the Swan in Boyram. Let myself go anyway, I went up to 96 kilos. So since Saturday, since I've been on this diet, and I'm, I'm on this diet, which is a very low carb diet, high fat, um, low protein at the moment, because protein has got sugars in it. And I'm also fasting. First day I fasted was 21 hours, and then two days since, 24 hours each time. So that's basically just one meal a day. Wait 24 hours before my next meal, and even they, you know, last night I just had a two boiled egg salad, with lots of greens, um, tomatoes, olive oil, I made a dressing with olive oil. Um, pink Himalayan salt, which puts the minerals back in your body, and coconut cider vinegar, which I'll show you in a bit. So yeah, I'm in a state of ketosis. I had ketosis flu yesterday really bad. I was on the run. Felt really good. Then it was like I hit a wall. Started feeling sick. And uh, yeah, that's what I did. I, I had nothing in my gut, so I was just puking up, just liquid. Basically, the coffee that I had before I went out. But it's really acidic. And you know, you get the really eh, sore throat. If you, if you puke up all your solids, yeah, there's nothing like to mix with the acid. It's almost pure acid coming out of it. Yeah, that burn. I was in pain all day yesterday, but a little bit better today. I had a headache yesterday. Felt shit. My mind was foggy. Couldn't really concentrate. But that's pretty normal when you go into keto flu, I guess. Uh, so anyway, I've dropped from 96 kilo to 90 kilo in four days. So that's no bad going. That is eating a lot of fat. In the form of, I'll show you the products. Proper lard pork fat. Cooking with that. One ingredient I'm, I'm brought out um, is 100% pure coconut oil, cooking oil. So I've basically been living on duck eggs. And they, obviously they got really rich, fatty yolks, loads of cholesterol, which isn't bad for you, it's good. All the advice we've been getting over the decade, every, uh, anyway. If you research keto diet, you'll find out they're really good and the white. The whites of the egg has protein. The yellow in the egg has all kinds of goodies in it. All kinds of amino acids, etc, etc. This one. Coconut cider vinegar. It's high in potassium. It's got the mother in it, which basically is why it's cloudy. Really good product. So these are all zero carb products. And then I've got Himalayan pink salt. Where you get your minerals from and if you start feeling hungry when you're fasting just dab a little bit on your tongue it takes away the, the hunger pangs and then other oils that are really good to eat is obviously extra virgin olive oil and i've got a great big can five liter can there it's spanish so uh it's 100 percent extra virgin olive oil five liters i've splashed out on that but i got it for 860 baht delivered, which I think is pretty good for five liters. Uh, not a lot to say really, I'm, I'm just making, what time is it now? I don't know. Probably about 10.30, so 
I ate, I ate yesterday, four o'clock. So I've, I've had 18 hours fasting already. I'm, I'm not hungry. When you eat, when you eat, actually eat a keto diet, because you're eating so much fat, it satiates um, yourself. It just turns off the hunger receptors. It's not like, you know, when you're eating cow, uh, carbohydrate-based diet, such as rice, etc. You know, you, you feel full after a, eating a rice meal, but, you know, an hour later, you, you're hungry again. And it's like when you're eating crisps, you can eat, you know, I can anyway, two, three bags, no problem. Cheetos, you name it. It's, your body never gets a signal that it's full. And it gets hooked on all this stuff, and this is basically why you get the keto flu. You're breaking the addiction cycle. But yeah, since I've not missed it at all. You know? I opened the fridges, bottles of Coke and what have you in there. That's the biggest one, you know. There's nothing really you have to deprive yourself food-wise because there's lots of great food you can eat. You can eat all the fat. You know, belly pork, bacon. That's uh, Mimi's dad. Crazy. Get that every day. Brilliant, eh? Every time he rides by on the motorbike. <laughs> anyway, I digress. So, yeah, and I mean, all these great salads, you just pile on the, the fat, the virgin olive oil, the, you know, I make a good dressing, I did the salad I had last night, good dressing with virgin olive oil and uh, coconut vinegar, sea salt, and put some oregano herbs in there. Tasted good. Um, I had raw cabbage, raw broccoli, uh, bok choy, tomatoes, onion, celery, great big bowl of it, and that's what I ate for my dinner last night, and I'm not hungry now. And if you do feel hungry, like I say, have a dab of sea, uh, the pink salt on your tongue. Um, you might drink vinegar water. It sounds awful, but you, know, you just have to do it. It's just basically water with coconut cider vinegar in there. Sometimes I'll use lime juice. Um, so wake up in the morning, have a coffee, black coffee, nothing else in it. Um, just carb free, protein free, just black coffee, that's it. Just to kick start the day. Um, and just don't feel hungry at all because of the high fat diet, which is a good thing. I hate to be starving. So I look at this as a challenge to be met and head on. I'm not going to give in. So, what results have I had apart from losing, what, six kilo of body weight? Probably the majority of which is water. You know, I'm not that naive. So, anyway, like I said, my blood sugar peaked at 17.8. Um, it's now at 8.8. .8. That's a good drop. That's within four or five days. I had it down at, I think, about the same. Was it not, it's around about nine, anyway. I, I'll go through the results on my machine. Uh, it went back up to 12.8 one day and then back down to 10 and back up to 12. But like I say, it's down at 8. But that's probably because my body was still burning um, glucose, what my liver was producing. And that is the aim, really, of, of this exercise is to lower insulin levels because it's, it's insulin. It's a hormone created, you know, secreted by your pancreas. And that's what causes the problems. Pancreas senses that your body's high in sugar and its response to it is to produce more and more and more insulin. And, uh, it's like a spiral unless you address it. And I know about taking metformin. I've done all the research. And basically, what the, all that does, it, it just treats the symptoms. It doesn't actually um, address the, the real problems, the disease itself. So there I am, I'm, I'm, I'm on a keto diet, I'm in ketosis right now, I'm losing weight, 
my blood sugar is dropping. Obviously, I've got to... That's one thing I did do. I thought, hey, well, I just bought this Chinese machine. It's got to be out. I can't be that high. So I tested Mimi, and you'll see on the results when, when I film it. I tested her, and when I tested her, she was 5.2. So uh, that was another wake-up call. It's not the machine. It's me. All right, I'll end the video here. It's enough waffle. Um, I've got some banana peppers that I've just halved and de-seeded. I'm going to fill those up with cream cheese. Put a little bit of spice on it. I, I might put a bit of cheddar on there as well. Put cheddar in the bottom, cream cheese on the top. A uh, bit of spice. I'm going to roast that in coconut oil uh, with some tomatoes. Um, that's probably going to be my meal for today. Uh, you know, side salad with an olive oil dressing so you know you can eat good the things you know, you're really restricted on is, is drink basically water I'm not gonna but you know I'm not gonna bother putting these stevia drops and all that crap in there I don't really crave sweet drinks anyway you know, I don't crave them I just like them uh, you know, I could drink diet coke but apparently that has a psychological effect on your body to produce uh, insulin, even though you're not you're not putting any glucose into your bloodstream. It's like a psychological effect on it. But uh, I don't, like I say at the moment, I'm just drinking water, water with lime juice, or I, I've got water in there right now with coconut vinegar inside of vinegar. All right. So my battle's begun. See what happens over the coming weeks. I'm enjoying it actually. I'm enjoying the challenge. Sort of like focus me to do something. You know? I feel okay myself, apart from the keto flu. Feeling good about losing the weight. Feeling good about eating good food. Food I thought you, you know, all the doctors advise you against eating. Bacon, spare ribs, mince, you know, ground pork, ground beef. You can eat the chicken fat, the chicken skin, you name it. Get it in there. Eat the, eat all the collagen, which is all the gristle. It's good for your body, so maybe I'll even start eating chicken feet. I have to spice it up a bit though. Uh, Chicken liver, so that's what I'm going to make as well later today is uh, chicken liver pate with uh, basically fry up onions and garlic, the livers, loads of butter, put a bit of chilli in there, paprika, blitz it up in a blender, cool it down in the fridge and uh, pour some butter over the top, make it look like potted meat when I was a kid. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I wasn't sure whether I should make this video or not, but I just advise anybody in sort of my age group, get yourself checked. These machines aren't uh, expensive. And uh, don't get despondent if uh, you have high blood sugar. I'm not. I feel okay, really. It's just another chapter in life, in the book of life that uh, I'm starting on. Right. On that positive note, I'll catch you later. Take care, everybody. See ya. Don't want to be ya. Or you don't want to be me right now. Bye. Bye for now. Take care. So, I'll just end this video with what I'm making for my dinner. This is what my brother brought me from England. It's a nice big block of extra mature West Country farmhouse cheddar. Went to Saturday the other day, bought some Philadelphia cream cheese. Just cut these into little slices and... I'll fill these beauties with it. They're sitting on coconut oil now so they don't stick when they start cooking. And I'm going to put tomatoes in there. I'll go out and find some more beans if there's any around. Uh, I've got other vegetables and salad bits in the fridge I could use as well. Right, so that's it already. I'll just end this video now. Just finished off my uh, bottle of Carolina Reaper chili sauce. Nice knowing you.
put some more, I may have put some onions and maybe some shallots and garlic in there before I actually roast it. Okay, happy days. See you later. Take care everybody. Bye for now.